Hey guys, it's Mike with Become the Night. Welcome back to another reaction video. The red hot chili peppers are the lowest forms of life to ever walk the earth. That is totally something you would expect me to say at this point, isn't it? No, in all actuality, I really do like the red hot chili peppers. And for a guy who does not like Nirvana, I'm sure for some of you that might seem a little strange. As we progress through this, I might touch on that a little more. But in the meantime, the video you've all been waiting for my reaction to a bunch of kids, which makes me pretty weird for reacting to a bunch of kids. All right, here we go. Okay, so today we're gonna have you listen to a band that has been around since the 80s and is still making music today. Hmm. The band is called Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh yeah, I've heard of them. I've heard their name before somewhere, but I don't know anything about just about everybody knows the Red Hot Chili Peppers, man. They haven't sold nearly as many records as a lot of other bands, but, I mean, they have permeated pop culture just with their name. Which, by the way, totally weird name, but a fantastic band name. It's totally rememberable. This is off their first, I believe, their first album. It has a nice beat already. And that's the thing is, <clears throat> there's so much of their stuff that so many people don't realize is out there that's really not their sound, if you will. Their earlier stuff definitely did have a little bit of a harder edge, and they even have some stuff later on in their catalog that had a harder edge too, and was closer to what you'd consider hard rock. It was actually a, well, we'll say, friend of mine who actually introduced me to some of their other stuff that's not on their pop hits, and I was like, wow, I was not expecting and that from the Chili Peppers. Okay, definitely rock and roll. I'm liking it. You like everything, Sydney. I'm trying to understand what he's saying, but it's not working out. All right, for the fucking record, that boy's name is Gabe. He's not a girl. For the love of God. Yeah, I've never really been a fan of Higher Ground or much of anything off the first album, honestly. Oh, yes, Under the Bridge. The standard, man. It sounds like more mellow. It sounds like a sad song. It definitely it is. City of Angels. That's strange. You should be dead dead. <laughs> Some interesting insight from a child. Like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. And that's the thing with these videos. I mean, obviously, they can't go through all the parts of the song. Part of what makes that song amazing isn't just the fact that it is chill-tastic awesome, but the way that it evolves by the end, it, you think it's maybe going into a bridge, and no, that's just the ending of the song, and it's by far my favorite part. It again goes back to something I talked about with the Try Not to Headbang Challenge. A lot of what makes something headbangable or just extremely emotional isn't just the part itself it's what that part is and represents in the context of the rest of the song that outro to under the bridge would be nothing without the whole build-up of the rest of the song that was way different from the first one i'm like yeah it was what Right, Breaking the Girl is pretty cool, but not one of my faves of theirs. As a matter of fact, a number of the ones on this album, I'm just like, eh, you know, I, I'll listen to it, but it doesn't really get me the way that their later stuff does. Not feeling it. <laughs> Friggin' Squire over here is not digging the Chili Peppers. And it's interesting, because if I recall, he wasn't super into Nirvana. Or maybe he was. I don't remember offhand. On a surface level, I would say most people only see significant differences between Red Hot Chili Peppers and Nirvana, as Nirvana had a harder edge and was maybe a little bit more grungy, whereas Red Hot Chili Peppers was more of a smoother California sound. In my opinion, I think Chili Peppers did a better job of actually songwriting in, in the terms of music. Lyrically speaking, I can't attest to either Kurt Cobain or to, I don't know who the hell writes lyrics to Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yes, the Chili Peppers did have some relatively simple parts to each of their songs, but the way that they built that soundscape and... I, th I think partly the emotion of how they are, the articulation they used while playing their instruments, but really just the mixture of all the movement of the parts. That not everything is doing the same thing. It's not 
overly repetitive from riff to riff, at least not usually. Not to mention their bridges and a lot of the ways that their songs progress are not typical pop song structure. Anyways, moving on. Okay. Give it away. Louder. All right, this is a song that I never understood why people dug so hard. Like, definitely will not throw any shade at RHCP, but oh my goodness, this song just does not do it for me. I can see maybe what some of the appeal is, because it is quite different. It also has that funky groove to it, but I'm just like, I'm just not digging it, man. Really yeah, not yeah. Much. <laughs> They're all so great. I don't think there's any, any songs that just sound the same. They're all different. I would say that "Suck My Kiss" and "Give It Away" actually sound pretty similar. I mean, they don't sound exactly the same. It's not like ACDC going back to back. You can't tell what fucking song you're listening to. But yeah, the earlier stuff, they definitely had a tighter sound, if you will. Their later stuff definitely branched off a lot more, which I really appreciated. I've heard this one Californication. Know this Everybody song. knows it. Californication is probably, in my mind, what the quintessential Red Hot Chili Peppers sound is. The, the shit was so so good. California vacation. <clears throat> and that's the thing is like, I know these guys are singing about something deeper than just all the weird babble they keep spouting off in all their songs. And I mean, especially if you listen to how morose the song is. And I've actually sat down and dissected this, the lyrics of this song. I don't totally get it. And honestly, don't care that much to know. The music's great. Good. The song's good. It kind yeah, it of is. sounds. I listen to the lyrics a lot when I listen to them, and I try to. Of course out, like, you do. What they mean. Scar tissue. I know this. Song. One that I can see why it was popular, but I still don't get why people praise the solo. Yes, there was a significant amount of feel in it, but I mean, I like it's like. It's like when I saw Nirvana Smells Like Team Spirit made the top 100 guitar solos. It's come the fuck on. Of all the ones, I think this is like the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Squire, dude. I don't know why he hates this song, but I don't know. I don't, I'd be interested to know what his musical tastes are besides rock and roll. I just like that he's not being a total dick about it like yours truly. I like the guitar. The guitar solo is just... Everything. Yeah, okay, kid. I don't know how to communicate, especially to younger kids or to people who haven't played an instrument or to people who just don't know much about music, why I really don't care for that solo at all. I mean, I don't hate it, but how you can even call it a, I mean, I guess technically it's a guitar solo. I would just call it another part of the song. When I think solo, I think more in the classical and jazz sense where it was like right out there where you definitely knew this was its part. Which I guess the later part, the later guitar solo in this song actually does that more. And yes, I do understand the less is more dynamic, but comparing that guitar solo to say For the Love of God by Steve Vai or Tender Surrender by Steve Vai, it's like, okay, really, like, are we gonna try and put these on the same plane? No offense to John Frischka Frushki, whatever the hell his name is, but sorry, dude, not, not there. I don't know what it is. It's just something about him just doesn't seem right. Yeah, there's a certain like melancholy, not quite right in the head type of thing. Danny California is all right, and that's the thing for me. Mostly, like I will almost never go out of my way to throw on RHCP unless I'm hanging out with my sister because I know we both dig on some RHCP. But there's never been a circumstance where I've been like, please turn it off. Like if it's ever on, I will let that shit jam the whole way through, and I will usually sing along because damn, they are singable songs. And unlike a lot of the other pop shit that's out there nowadays, their lyrics apparently have some meaning. I haven't figured them out yet, but some somebody can. 
All right, Sydney literally likes everything. We need to freaking co-op Sydney and expose her to progressive metal, fellas. Hell yeah, I mean, we can get this girl to our side. From their new album. I have not listened to the new album yet. I'll be honest, what I'm listening to now is kind of like, eh. Quite like that was better than the other song. The Squire and I are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum on this one. Maybe not complete opposite ends, but a lot of the ones that I'm chill with, he's just like, and I did not feel that great about that last one, and he's totally digging it. So he and I are, are gonna have to get resynced back up on the the next episode. Finally, recently, when asked about how long he and the band will be making music, the lead singer Anthony Kiedis said that he planned to be making music until he dies and doesn't ever want to stop. Good for him. It's his decision. I mean, it's not too bad of a decision <clears throat> if you really like music. But I think he should quit while he's ahead because his music isn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kid has a spot on my show in the future. Final thought. Oh, wait a second. Be right back. Oh, that's better. For the record, once you pay for my drinks, then you can tell me how the fuck to drink them. So final thoughts on the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, I really like the band. They did quite a bit for the 90s, actually. I don't know, I don't think they were one of the first ones to get the California sound out there, but they were definitely one of the first ones to make it popularized. Almost like an American revitalization of reggae. My opinion, Red Hot Chili Peppers are a net positive to the contribution of music. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. I'm just gonna sit here and keep sipping on my whiskey that's more bruised than a battered wife. If you want to know when my videos come out, please go follow me on Twitter at Become the Night. You can find me on Facebook as well. And if you're thinking to yourself, Mike, this looks so low budget. That's because it is. If you want to roll over to Patreon and pledge some money to help me actually have a budget to make these shows, I can start actually putting some good shit together. Who knows? YouTube might even become my job. Anyways, Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!